choices do leaders have when exercising power over their followers to achieve success? Authorities and partisans can be seen as bringing various sources of power to bear upon one another in order to bring about desired outcomes. Authorities usually have greater access to formal sources of power embedded in organisational social systems, however both groups have access to a wide array of power sources. Bases of power have been considered by many academics such as Bourdieu, Pfeffer, French and Raven and Pape, to name a few. Let's look now at the list of the bases of power put forward by these authors and others. Reward power. This relates to access to rewards such as employment, money and support which can be issued in return for compliance. Coercive power. This power represents the ability to impose penalties or sanctions to be issued for non-compliance. Referent power. Also known as personal power, referent power represents a set of personality dispositions or behaviours that drive a person to comply or commit because they wish to emulate or please the owner of these traits. There can be many reasons why the perceiver judges the possessor as worthy of being submitted to, and these include attractiveness, social intelligence, visionary, charismatic, politically astute, etc. Stephen Covey, among many others, noted that this base of power, where the leader is honoured, respected and genuinely regarded, is far more likely than other bases of power to elicit genuine commitment to the leader's goal than to others. Legitimate power also known as positional power. Legitimate power represents the formal authority embedded within an organisation or a society. Roles such as judge, professor or CEO are typical examples of high legitimate power roles. Expert power. Expert power relates to superior knowledge, skills or information possessed by an individual which is relevant to the situation at hand and to which others need to defer in order to succeed. Information power. Similar to expert power, information power represents the ability to access knowledge or information not readily available to others in the situation. Affiliation power. This refers to power which is borrowed by association with a more powerful individual. It may be by friendship or by working for a powerful individual or even acting as a gatekeeper to a powerful individual. Group power. Group power is derived from solidarity and weight of numbers. It represents the collective capacity of a group of people to create influence. Technological power. Similar to information power, technological power represents the ability to use technology or to control access to technology that relates to communication, information, task structure, etc. Bureaucratic power. This power usually resides in the hands of career officials within large structures and systems, particularly government which gives some individuals control over decision-making and information through their ability to understand and navigate complex systems. Philosophical power. The power associated with values and worldviews which can be expressed and shared by others. The Pope or the Dalai Lama are examples of people who possess philosophical power. So, how does studying and knowing about these various power bases help leaders? On a practical level, leaders need to use differing methods in order to influence an individual or a group towards achieving the group's goal. Nearly every self-help book on leadership contains some kind of checklist of influence tactics that a leader should have in their leadership toolbox. While each will have a differing number of tactics, they can be roughly grouped into three types. Compliance or coercion tactics, exchange tactics, or commitment or relational tactics. Compliance tactics usually, though not always, are used by leaders with legitimate or positional authority with control over some forms of coercive power. Ultimatums. These represent threats, real or imagined by the follower, that negative consequences will flow from not complying with the ultimatum. Directives. These are delivered as orders, usually in an uncompromising way that tell people what to do and how to do it without any hint that negotiation on the issue might be possible. Pressure. In this tactic, the leader lets the follower know that they are constantly monitoring the follower for their compliance with their wishes. This is carried out via constant reminders of deadlines or constant interruption of the follower to ensure that the task is being accomplished the way the leader wants. 
The problem with these kinds of influencing tactics is that most of us resent being told what to do and we dislike having to do it in a particular way, especially if the task requires anything more than rudimentary cognitive skills. The consequence is that while the leader may gain compliance, they will also accumulate a store of resentment from the follower that will build over time. Ultimately, this will result in disempowered and demotivated followers who will find ways to resist or will simply leave to find better leadership elsewhere. Nonetheless, there are times when this kind of leadership is appropriate. The first is where there is simply no time to engage in other methods of influence. The task is critical and needs to be attended to immediately. An example would be an issue of imminent threat to the safety of a follower. It may be that they are about to touch a live wire or drive into someone. There is no time to use negotiation or rational persuasion. The leader just needs to yell stop. The second example is perhaps not as time critical as the first example, but nonetheless an important deadline is looming and the matter affects the outcome of the team and or the organisation. Perhaps the follower doesn't understand the importance of the deadline and the leader is completely occupied on other parts of the task. In this case, the follower may be wanting to prioritise leaving for the day when a critical report that is needed for a board decision is due the next day. Other forms of influence are simply not working or there is no time to try. In this case, the leader simply orders the follower to stay and complete the report. A good leader would still come back to the follower once things have calmed down and explain why they ordered them to stay back. Exchange tactics are often typified by neutral long-term outcomes. They neither build commitment, nor do they necessarily bring about resentment over compliance. Alternatively, some of these tactics have a chance of success or failure, depending upon how they are implemented and perhaps some factors that may be beyond the control of the leader. Exchange. In this tactic, the leader makes a deal or transacts with the follower. If you do something for me, I'll do something for you. It could be that you ask your follower to stay back and finish a report and then offer them the following day off. Ingratiation tactic. In this tactic, a potential, though somewhat nebulous, reward is alluded to, or the leader talks about how good the follower is in order to motivate the follower to action. This may work initially, but if no reward is forthcoming and or the praise is seen as self-serving, the influenced tactic will eventually backfire. Elevating ambition. Similar to ingratiation, except the appeal is to something aspirational. The appeal may be to the higher goals of the organisation or helping their fellow team members and the rewards that will come from success. Again, if the goals are truly aspirational and team membership is valued, this tactic may work. However, if no reward or progress toward the goal manifests, the tactic may again misfire. Coalition building. A tactic that is usually employed during change and where some are resisting the need for change. A coalition of the willing can be brought to bear on the resistors in a form of in-group, out-group coercion. A lot depends on how such tactics are employed. Where resistors can see the benefits of compliance through their peers' influence, the tactic may succeed with little damage. However, where resistors feel additionally victimised or ostracised, then the damage may be permanent. Commitment tactics are widely heralded as producing long-term follower commitment rather than simple compliance. However, they each require the leader to carefully construct and communicate a narrative about the future the desirability of the outcomes of working towards a common goal, and spending time with followers in helping them to understand that narrative. Success of these tactics is also highly dependent upon how genuine the followers perceive their leader to be. Rational argument. Here, the leader explains using cause and effect, action and reaction, the logic behind their narrative about the future and the followers' role in bringing that future about. Emotional engagement. The leader shares their personal value system and their belief in the goal. They invite, through consultation and listening, the thoughts and feelings of followers regarding the goal with the aim of achieving a genuine consensus. The leader aims to inspire the followers through a shared vision of the future. Support. This tactic sees the leader offering ongoing encouragement, removing obstacles, providing resources, offering meaningful feedback and challenging the followers to achieve the shared goal. Once in a while, the leader may also have to roll up their sleeves and join their followers in the trenches, so to speak, to obviously demonstrate their support for the followers and the goal. So, 
we can see that leaders can choose various bases of power and have a whole toolbox of influence tactics available to them when exercising power over their followers to achieve success. However, learning how and when to choose and use different tactics in order to influence either an individual or a group is crucial to effective leadership.